Yeah. Well, I think something that's kind of interesting, and talking about that the new world order, and, and uh, I mean, you hear a lot of the commentary in the anti United Nations, for mm -hmm. example, but yet, if that's really how they see the prophecy, then um, it seems like they, they're fighting those entities, such as the United Nations, rather than just kind of shrugging your, their shoulders and, and putting, saying, well, this is just part of the uh, you know, the biblical prophecy or whatever, and uh, so I guess I don't understand what. Okay. The Here's their viewpoint. The United Nation exists because of a faulty concept called multinationalism. That nations should work together and agree with one another, and if, when necessary, give up or be willing to mutually surrender sovereignty in order to solve a problem or deal with an issue like hunger or AIDS or anything like that. In other words, just like the European Union, you have all of these nations in Europe, but now we have a united Europe to which you can have a centralized um, currency, government, rules, language, etc. They see these as realities, but they see them as fulfillments of prophecy, laying the groundwork for this new world order, which they believe is the um, work of the Antichrist. Now, this is in part one of the reasons why they fight against the United Nations. They don't like the United Nations. They're suspicious of the United Nations as part of this conspiracy that exists with all of these organizations to try to, one, marry <coughs> religion, take Christianity rather than the one and only true religion and make it one of many religions, to make a one world religion, and our governments to be one government. But now, if I, but if I here's, here's, here's the issue. If I believe that this is a part of biblical prophecy, then I want it to continue. On the other hand, they believe that Remember, in order for the Antichrist to appear, what has to be removed? The church. So as long as I'm here, I am the light of the world. I am the salt. I am here to fight against this, to postpone the Antichrist, to hopefully not, even though I know I can't defeat it, because the Antichrist is going to come. See, that's their dilemma. That's their contradiction. I don't want it, but I know it has to come in order for the Antichrist to, take, to, to be here. However, I don't have to worry about it, because I'm raptured out. Well, exactly. I mean, don't I want this to happen because I'm this good Christian and then I'll just shoot up to heaven Absolutely. and everything will be great? I mean, why do I need to continue to struggle and go to work every day? I mean, shouldn't I, you know, try to make this happen? I will well, close in 30 minutes. Yeah. If you have material, check now. Yeah, we are for library library. 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 Please come to the circulation basket this time. That they have the dilemma, and to answer your question this way, the Bible says that if you don't work, you don't eat. The Bible says that in order to be a responsible person, you need to care for your family. The Bible says that to be a good citizen, you need to be in the world, but not of the world. In other words, I am in the world, I am functioning in the world, but I'm not of this. I oppose this. I'm not a part of this. I separate myself from this, even though I have to live into, in the world until Jesus does rescue me. So as long as I'm here, I got to get up. I got to go to work. I got to be a good person. I got to be, you know, a responsible person. Um, and, and so that's how they try to harmonize that. But I know we've been talking about tonight, and I think, and I hope we probably just um, end the time. Um, could you spend a few minutes, or, or perhaps we could address this, you know, at the next um, session that we have, discussing how other faiths approach end of time if they have something similar. I'm going to do just this one as an example. Let's take the Muslim religion. Let's take Obama, uh, Obama John, however you say his name. Messiah, Mullah type person. In order to bring that Mullah 
into existence, there has to be a war with Israel. So in his faith, in his belief of the end times, there will be a, get this, there will be a Muslim one world order that will be brought in by the Mullah, who is brought into existence when Israel is attacked and destroyed. Well, you see what the heck is going on here in the Middle East and where some of these rattled Muslims believe that they are ushering in their end times by con uh, establishing war with Israel and the great state of the United States and everyone who's attached to them so that this new leader, this super leader, can produce the Muslim one world order. So religions, and, and I will say Muslim and Christianity work in this way differently than Judaism, the Hindu, Buddhist, and others don't have these types of concepts. They view enlightenment as an individual thing. Now, they also believe, unfortunately, that they have to protect their own religion from the tainting or corruption of another religion, which is where they get into the conflicts and the fighting and the wars. Because I don't want you invading my home, my life, my area, my territory, with your Muslim faith or your Hindu faith if I'm a Buddhist or what have you. So it's a different approach. It's not an end time, some super messiah coming down, but rather these religions tend to, particularly the Eastern religions, are a lot different than the Christian Muslim religions, which have this end time dominance world ruling type thing. Uh, you don't see that in the Eastern religions in any way that I've been able to see. Um, so the big difference is in some of the religions, this is primarily, I think, a Christian Muslim. I have to think again about, now the Jewish religion does believe in a Messiah. It does believe that a Messiah will come and believe that I'm a, we find that Orthodox Judaism. Now, Reformed and, and others don't necessarily do this because there are some Jewish religions some of religionists who take the concept of the Messiah not as a person but as the nation. So as Israel is redeemed and saved, that is the mechanism uh, for salvation rather than a person, a Messiah person. However, there are Orthodox Jews that also are waiting for a Messiah to come to save the nation. I don't equate that necessarily as a world dominance but rather the saving of the nation of Israel. So there are differences here. But the two that are really kind of, kind of interesting are the Muslim and the Christian. So like really she is a fight there. Like she was saying that Christians shouldn't be fighting against it, should welcome the end of times. That's what the Muslims do. So, okay. However, there is a belief that we can bring about the end times by doing certain things. And um, it's arrogant. It is. It's incredibly <laughs> arrogant to think that our intention can override the intention of God's absolute intention. However, the trick is to align our intentions with what God has revealed in His Word. Then, when we've got our intentions and God's intentions in the same way, we can usher in the end times in the proper way. But well, you're absolutely right. This world that it needs to end anyway. <laughs> Man's nature is evil. We're in original sin. We've got to be freed from death and sin. And we can't get freed from death and sin unless we get to live it again. You just, you just got to accept it, Kyle. <laughs> okay, we do need to wrap up. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs>